Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov too and uh, yeah I'm finally back. Uh, I wasn't at home for about six weeks now and I'm back but it's not all good news because I'm only here for one week because it's my half term holiday and I have to go back to school again so that means away again for uh, after this week but I'll be coming back um, on the 13th of December and then I'll be home for good so it will just be all down to the usual again but um, now I'm here again for a week so um, I'll be doing some reports on the 8.8 .8 test server probably soon uh, or oh, it's actually 8.9 test server by now already and I was thinking of coming up with a XVM mod guide and generally a mod guide uh, for patch uh, 8.8 because it works slightly different and lots of people have requested uh, for me to do that so I'm probably gonna have a go at that and um, yeah this game here is a game of a leopard and I'm not really showing it to you because it's that amazing I mean it's an alright game but uh, I'm showing it to you because it's just so amazingly close and tense at the end so um, I just got myself a kill from that Aufklärungspanther and um, yeah I've headed up to this uh, right hand side of the map and you can see most of my teams headed into the city obviously most of those guys there being heavy tanks I've got a bit of support with me here for example that E75 down there and multiple enemies have been spotted up there on that ridge, that means you have to be very careful. I think I got a shot into that T-54, but I can't be entirely sure. And... Let's see... No, T-32, uh, AMX AC-46. He's really unlucky to have come into a tier 10 game. Okay, he was platooned up with two tier 8s, so that's why he got into this game, but it's just a crappy matchup for him. And uh, we could already take out the enemy E100, which is really good news. By the way, it is amazing matchmaking. There are only three tier 10 tanks in each team. And the T54 decides to YOLO. Ah, I missed my shot, didn't give it enough lead. That was actually pretty poor there. I drive back and take another shot. Uh, the reason why you see me driving back here is because I don't want really to take any fire from snipers on that ridge line. You can see a heavy tank spot back there, an AMX5100. Now I drive up again, aim and uh, yeah I get a shot into it with a bit above average damage roll the average damage of a leopard one is 390 so uh, in case you're wondering this is not the test server this is the live server and uh, I'm trying to use the cover of bushes here as well as possible that T54 T9 Russian medium tank is still in the brush up there somewhere so I have to be very very careful here T-32 is pretty far up front, I'm f yeah, I'm probably going to go up, follow and try to support him, help him out a bit. At the moment I'm just thinking about should I risk it and go after that T-54, he's going to see me before I see him because he's in bush cover, but he's on very low health, which means I could probably one or two shot him. So I would probably win the engagement, but I have to be careful with snipers from that ridge again. So this can be very tricky, but I'm on full health, I'm a T10 tank, he's a T9 tank, I'm going to go for it because we can't really advance any further with him sitting up here somewhere. And I've been spotted, but I think I'm in cover from him behind this little ridge here. But the moment I go over it, he's probably going to start shooting at me. And yes, there he is. Okay, he's on low health. But my ammo rack goes, I repair it. And I kind of try to circle strafe him, but he gets two hits into me. But then I finish him off. So that was my second kill there after the Aufklärungs Panther. And that kill was pretty important because it means that we can now progress down here. And this WZ120 spotted a very, very dangerous vehicle. But I've got very good gun depression and he hasn't. That's why I try to get onto lower ground than him. Um, to make it a lot more difficult for him to hit me but he gets a shot into me anyway I get it to cover from him because I haven't got any armor whatsoever so next I'm gonna try to poke a shot for Effie oh he's aiming at oh that was so close okay he would have nearly gotten me and the DZ is coming over 
and it gets a shot into me. I'm on very low health now. He kills my driver. I repair, or not repair it. I um, heal him because uh, drive is very important in this kind of situation. And trying to maneuver around here without the drive very, very, very difficult. So. Uh, right now, I'm telling my T32 pal and my other friends that I'm gonna go round. That means that I'm gonna try to attack my WZ from the rear, who's at the moment, as far as we know, uh, facing towards that T32. But I'm in for a pretty bad surprise once I come up here. Because. Oh, let's see. Careful, careful. Um, oh my god, okay, he's coming, he's coming, oh, back, back, he's got a lot higher alpha damage than me. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, I'm going to lose every time, especially because I've only got 412 HP left, and he's on over a thousand health. So again, I'm trying to get onto lower ground than him, because his gun depression sucks. But he isn't being filled, he's a pretty good player, apparently. He knows that if he comes down here, I'll have the first two shots into him before he can take a shot into me. So, I wait. And at the moment, things are looking pretty good for my team. The score's 10 to 8. And uh, so we've still got both our tier 10s, or, or three of our tier 10s, if you count the artillery. Well, they have only got one. So this T69 is coming. Ah, oh, but he isn't stupid. He waits. I don't really want to poke round because I'm on that low health. And, oh, there's a fighting vehicle. Okay. Okay, I'm in a very, very tricky situation here. I turn around, the T69 gets taken out by the T32, I think, or maybe by the... Yeah, it's also T32. And, oh, okay, I really have to stop poking around that corner. And, oh, 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 okay. Okay, I'm gonna... That's... Okay, the WZ's coming around. And, oh, no, that was so stupid. I tried to turn around to get the WZ, and the FV got me from behind. Oh, so, so stupid. Okay. So, um, anyway, I'm going to let you watch the rest of this game, because it was pretty tense. So, the T-32 is in a close quarters combat situation for WZ, he's probably going to lose, but he can get a nice shot into him. But was that the T-32? Yeah, probably, but it was a pretty high damage roll for the tank. Ah, uh, I'm not sure, but the WZ kills him anyway, but he left him on very low health. Now, maybe the uh, AMX AC46 can finish off a WZ but he can't so I'm sorry for this like oh that was weird okay I'm sorry for this anyway so here we are oh, looking at the game out of the perspective of the E100 and okay this is not looking good at all anymore they've got a fighting vehicle on pretty high health we've got an E100 and two artilleries, but they still got the WZ. Okay, the artillery is taken out by the T-92, who's a pretty good player, apparently. But the E-100 can be one shot by the fighting vehicle if it's using HE or HESH. So he has to be very careful. I guess his best bet at the moment is to light up the FE and wait for the T-92 to reload, or hope that the SU-14-2 gets him. The SU-14 has got immense alpha damage. It could easily one-shot that fighting vehicle if it would hit him directly. And the T-92, obviously. I mean, the second highest alpha damage of the game, I think. Yeah. So, it's a very, very tricky situation, and we don't know where the WZ is. He might be going for the artillery, or he might decide that it's more important to prioritize the E100. So, I'm telling this E100 in chat that the WZ, if he comes for him, will probably not be as stupid as to attack him frontally and come round so that he can wedge him in between the fighting vehicle and himself. So, um, the E100 obviously thinks the same. So, he turns towards here and if the WZ attacks him front on, he's going to lose definitely in this situation because the E100 has just got that much more health. And if the E100 gets one hit into him only, the WZ will be wrecked. So, now of course, while the E100 is facing the other way, the T32 
fighting vehicle could be coming up behind him. And oh, the WZ spot on our base. He takes out the... And oh my god! The WZ takes out the SU, but the T-92 kills the WZ from that distance. So good. So good work by the T-92. So good. So... Oh, that was amazing. And that, I think the T-32, well, uh, somebody from our team was telling the E-100 to cap. So, uh, I'm saying you better not cap because yeah, he would just be killed, but he's killed anyway. So, now it's one-on-one, -on -one artillery against fighting vehicle. This is so tense. Look, if a, if a fighting vehicle gets one shot into the artillery, the artillery will be obviously killed. But if artillery directly hits the fighting vehicle, it could one-shot him. And even with splash damage, it's got a good chance of destroying him with one hit. So, oh. And this T-92 does something really, really clever here. I mean, I'm a crappy artillery player myself, but he really owns it. Look at this. This is amazing. He's just t taking up position behind these bushes with this little wall covering up nearly the whole of his tank. This is a really strong position. He knows that the FE will probably try to come at him down this uh, valley here. And, oh, this is so clever. So, all he has to do now is wait. And oh, there's a fighting vehicle, oh, aim, he hasn't been spotted, the fighting vehicle is still coming up, that means he hasn't been spotted. Oh no, he leaves them on 29 health, I can't believe it, oh no, you see me going in chat there, no, so close, oh, and the fighting vehicle gets him, that was so close, I can't believe for RNG, 29 hit points. That's so ridiculous. Oh, I think, I think I haven't been so excited in a World of Tanks game for a long, long time. Oh my days, that was such a close game. I, I really, oh, it would have been so amazing if T92 had won that engagement. I would have been like just, oh, it would have been absolutely amazing. But, um, yeah, I uh, we walked out of that game with about 3,000 damage, so we did alright, but uh, I really have to give that T92 player credit, he did an amazing job. And I think if I had been so stupid in that game and hadn't given, my, uh, given the fighting vehicle a shot at my side, we could have easily won that. So it probably was mostly my fault that we lost that game, but still, it was such a good, good game. I enjoyed watching this so much even after I was killed so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did if you did consider giving it a thumbs up below and uh, maybe comment or subscribe to my channel and uh, also check out my Facebook page I really should promote that more because um, nobody seems to have a look at that page but it's pretty good because I can like message you guys and so on and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to put up some more videos than usual over the next week as I'm home and I hope you are looking forward to that too. Thanks for watching as usual and I hope I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye bye.